you've seen all the adverts. They say that most engine wear occurs in the first few minutes after you start the engine. So is that true? What's going on inside the engine? And what damage can you actually do if you don't treat the engine differently during this warm up period? In this video, we're just going to look at the technical aspects of an engine, what happens to the engine as it warms up and the typical problems that you get or the problems the engine is experiencing while it gets up to operating temperature. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a little more mechanical sympathy with your car and you'll be able to take better care of it. So I'm also going to explain the correct way to warm up an engine. There's a lot of myths out there. A lot of people make the same mistake when it comes to warming up their engine, particularly on those cold, frosty mornings. And they can inadvertently be creating more problems and creating more damage for themselves. So we'll address that toward the end of the video. But let's just crack on with the important aspects of engine warm up and what's going on inside the engine. So all of those of us that have got cats, you'll know that as soon as the cat wakes up, it stretches out. It's stretching up and warming up those muscles. And if we go and do some exercise, it's a good idea to warm up our muscles first. So the idea of warming up to avoid injuries is quite natural and common to us. But do we afford the same courtesy to our cars, particularly our engines? Do we allow them to warm up? Is it really that important? So the components in the engine are made of metal. As metal warms up, it expands. So the shape of the components in the engine are changing. You probably won't see this with your naked eye, but the change is happening as those components warm up. So most of the components start off relatively small and as they heat up, they expand. It's important to know that if you've got forged parts, particularly forged pistons and forged cranks, they expand at a different rate to non-forged metals. So they tend to start off even smaller. And as the engine warms up, they start to expand. Now, you want everything to be correctly bedded into place. So as the piston's going up and down and handling the explosion going on inside the cylinders, you really want that piston and the piston rings to be as close to the cylinder wall as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to lose all of that energy. Plus, if it's not fitting precisely, it's going to rattle around. And that's a condition that we would refer to as piston slap. Now, all engines experience piston slap, but it's usually to a very small degree unless the wear and tear has happened or you've got a particularly unusual high performance engine where there's a lot more expansion going to go on inside the engine. So things rattle around a lot more when it's cold. If you drive the car too hard in that cold warm up period where the piston slap is happening and the pistons effectively just moving around inside the cylinder from left to right, you're going to be damaging the piston rings, the pistons and the cylinders themselves. So I've actually seen score marks on the cylinder walls. I've seen cracked pistons and damaged piston rings just because the car has been driven too hard during that warm up cycle. So all the while it's cold, there's a lot more lateral side to side motion going on. But as it warms up, things start to bed in nicer. And most of the energy from the explosion in the exhaust is pushing the piston down. There's very little lateral movement when it's all warm. So the other big aspect of driving a cold engine is that the oil the lifeblood of the engine, the lubricant that ensures that metal surfaces are not experiencing great amounts of friction, it's not up to temperature. You're not getting the lubrication that you do when the oil is at the correct temperature. So oil is much thicker, it's more viscous when it is cold. So allowing the engine oil to warm up is probably the single biggest factor in the engine wear that goes on. When you first start the engine, it does take a few seconds for the oil to properly circulate around the engine. So it's really good when you first get in the car to start it up and just leave the engine running for five to 10 seconds before you start messing around with the throttle and putting the engine under any load. So in that very low stress situation, it gets an opportunity to raise the oil pressure and circulate that oil around the engine and start the lubrication. The other thing that happens within the engine during this warm up cycle is it's not running on the closed loop system. So the closed loop system is where it's monitoring the exhaust gases and it's trimming the amount of fuel that goes in. So the ECU doesn't trim to that extent during that warm up cycle. And the whole aim is to get the engine up to temperature. And that can often result in a rich mixture where unburnt fuel is actually entering the catalyst, a lot more soot 
is being produced by the engine as it burns. And if you've got a car with a DPF filter, a diesel engine, that can also cause problems. So when an engine is cold, it's nowhere near as efficient. It's producing a lot more pollutants and there's a lot more moisture buildup inside the engine. The heat in the engine is not sufficient to evaporate off all of that moisture that's um, building up. You'll actually see the moisture collecting in the exhaust. So a little bit more on that later, because that's something that can happen and degrade the long term reliability of your car just through poor startup habit. So your catalytic converter is in the exhaust and it needs to be warm to operate efficiently. And until that gets warm, you're chucking out all sorts of pollutants into the environment. More importantly, those unburnt fuel particles are entering the catalyst. So that can cause the catalyst to degrade in its performance. It's basically coating the catalytic surfaces so they no longer react with the exhaust gases going over because there's a, a layer of fuel over them. And also that fuel itself can burn within the catalyst. So you've effectively got a second combustion chamber where the catalyst just starts getting really hot. It will eventually glow and it will burn itself out and you'll actually lose that honeycomb structure of the catalyst just because it's getting too hot. So warming up the engine, this is the single biggest thing that you can do as a driver. So we've mentioned already that you just allow the engine to tick over for a few seconds to allow the oil to circulate. It doesn't take very long for the oil to circulate, but you don't want to get in and start putting the engine under load immediately when you've started it. So for most drivers, putting their safety belt on or their seat belt on after they've started the engine just provides enough of a delay for the engine oil to start lubricating around the engine and get the circulation going. The two things that you must never do on a cold engine is just leave the engine idling. I see a lot of people doing this on those cold winter mornings. They just leave it on the drive with the engine on to hopefully warm it up. That's a really inefficient way of warming up the engine. Unless the engine is under load, it's just going to be ticking over. It's never going to get properly up to temperature for a long period of time. And there's a lot of inefficient combustion processes going on. So moisture and acids are building up inside the engine, which is going to be detrimental to the long life of the engine. That's going to enter the engine oil and cause all sorts of problems and lubrication issues. And that moisture will also collect in the exhaust. So as you rev the engine, you'll notice all this water shooting out of the exhaust. And that's usually a sign that the engine has just been left ticking over and that moisture has started to build up. So that's a really bad idea. The other thing you should never do is drive at high RPMs. So using full throttle loads or driving at high RPMs is putting a lot more stress on that cold engine. And as we've already explained, the components within the engine aren't fully expanded. They're not fully mating to the surfaces that you want them to. You've got excessive play there, excessive vibration, and the whole engine is going to suffer as a result of driving it too hard while it's cold. So what should you do? Well, leave the car for a few seconds, get in and drive it gently until the engine oil is up to temperature. So I'm saying specifically the engine oil because the water temperature is not an indicator of the engine being up to temperature. The actual operating temperature of the engine usually happens a little while after the engine's water has got up to temperature. That's just the nature of the water cooling system and the way it works. So it's a good idea to get an oil temperature sensor fitted to your car just to be extra sure. Um, but also avoid those short journeys. So if you've got, say, three journeys to do in a week and they'd all be short journeys, can you do them all on the same day? So at least some of them are on a warm or a partially warm engine. That will reduce the risk that you have for the short journeys that you're doing on the car under cold conditions or cold engine conditions. So that'll help prolong the life of the engine, just rearranging your schedule a little bit. So for most people, it's not inconvenient, but it does pay to sometimes to just drive around the block, make sure the engine is warmer. If you're forced to do a short journey, at least give the engine the chance to get up to its correct operating temperature. And then when you jump in the car for the return journey, at least that return journey is going to be under a warm engine and warm engine condition. So if you've got a turbo on your engine, it's also important to allow a bit of time for the turbo and the oil in the turbo to cool down after you've done a bit of spirited driving. So I've done another video that specifically goes into turbo engines 
and it explains the five things that people commonly do to turbo engines that will reduce the life expectancy of the turbocharger itself. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you're interested in getting better long-term reliability and performance from your car. See you in this next video. Thanks for watching.